uh, who is from Kota. I think Dr. Pandey has, from Rajasthan state at least, he has the maximum number of research papers public, uh, published in peer-reviewed journal, more than 150, I guess. And he has done a lot of work with Dr. David Apple in uh, US and Dr. Nick Mamelis. He's a prolific surgeon, a great person, and a great friend. Dr. Pandey, he'll be speaking on uh, Tori Kyle use in keratoconus post uh, keratoplasty patients. Dr. Suresh Pandey. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Dr. Uh, Harsul, for inviting me on this wonderful course of uh, on toric intraocular lensage. Uh, my previous uh, speakers have done wonderful job to update you on uh, the uh, various uh, technology to uh, calculate lens power, the marking of the eye, the image guided system, and the software for assessment and how to manage uh, the refractive surprise. And uh, my talk uh, is uh, focused on, on how to get the visual outcome on the very unusual or challenging situation. So once you are get used to uh, toric lens for routine cases, then you can expand the indication of the toric lenses in very difficult situation or very unusual situation. Uh, so I'm going to show you a video uh, of some of these cases uh, of toric lens implantation in uh, unusual situations such as keratoconus, uh, post RK cases, traumatic cataract, etc. And it's very important uh, that before you start these cases, counseling is very important. The patient should be explained about the refractive surprise and the management of the refractive surprise. So never, uh, always uh, under promise and over deliver. So this is my first case of uh, toric lens implantation in the case of stable keratoconus with cataract. And uh, as uh, you have uh, listened to previous speaker, now we have tools of excellent uh, uh, marking the lens power calculation are there with using optical biometric system and the industry uh, has come with uh, the lot of uh, excellent designs custom made designs which can correct the astigmatism of more than uh, 10 diopter also so this was a case of toric lens uh, keratoconus uh, which uh, uh, has corneal astigmatism of uh, approximately uh, 8 diopter and we have implanted a custom made Ultima Smart Toric Lens of 4 diopter with 10 diopter of uh, uh, cylinder incorporated in this. So here you can see this is a plate design and the Smart Toric means you can mark only a 0, 180 degree axis and the, the, this lens is designed in such a way that the, uh, the cylinder power is uh, you know incorporated in such a way that you just align the lens in 180 uh, 0 to 180 degree and they no need of dialing the lens so this was the first case of toric lens implantation in a, a case of stable keratoconus now i'm going to show you another video of renner toric lens implantation uh, no financial interest in another case of uh, keratoglobus or ectatic corneal dis disorder this was my old video uh, done approximately nine years back. At that time, uh, the, uh, this toric lens in high, this high cylinder uh, was available with the Rena design. Nowadays, I prefer hydrophobic lens implantation uh, because of the techniques of the hydrophobic lens material. And uh, this techniques or uh, this bio addition is very important uh, part of the success or long term visual outcome of toric lens implantation. So most of the time, uh, the hydrophilic lens, they don't bind so tightly or the addition property is lacking. So my preferred lens material is hydrophobic lens. So whenever you plant, uh, implant the toric lens in such unusual situation, it's always uh, cross-check the K reading uh, uh, with uh, two different equipment. I have uh, Simplex uh, Pentacam uh, system. I also use uh, topography and uh, I will, uh, you know, master to uh, cross-check the K reading. And uh, rexis should be done precisely 5 to 5.25 millimeter in size. And uh, I use dispersive OVD, so chondrite sulfate based OVD in all my cases. And of course, the, the phaco emulsification, cortical cleanup should be uh, done precisely perfectly. Uh, you can see the, the lens optics uh, uh, size is 6.25 millimeter. And uh, uh, so the Rainer. Uh, company they manufacture the lenses in such a way that the in my big eyes 
these large people, the size of the optic is little larger. And they also have sulcoflex toric and sulcoflex multifocal lens, which uh, remains very important tool to manage the refractive surprise. So whenever you have refractive surprise, you can uh, try their sulcoflex multifocal sulcoflex toric lens, uh, implant them in the piggyback manner. The surgery in these cases is straightforward. Uh, the only thing which you need to uh, cross check is the precise care reading, precise lens power calculation and also uh, the uh, just make sure that you dial, uh, you uh, align the lens properly. So previously I was using uh, the uh, technique of uh, uh, marking, uh, axis marking with ink pen. Now I use the technique of uh, the uh, 26 gauge needle as Dr. Harshul shown very nicely. Uh, I think uh, the, the system for, you know, uh, the marking system uh, which uh, are available Kelis to Vision or Varian system is also very important uh, tools nowadays. This is my third case uh, of uh, toric lens implantation in a case of radial keratotomy or RK. So in cases of RK, uh, toric lens can be helpful to correct this residual astigmatism, uh, but uh, the most important part or the difficult challenge in these cases um, that you know uh, you the the incision can open up. So this case was uh, 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 this case of RK. I was uh, I didn't did a couple of years ago, and uh, in such cases uh, always I'm making is clear corner incision, but always try to make a, a scalar pocket incision so that the incision should not uh, open up. And uh, toric lens can helpful to uh, to minimize uh, the residual astigmatism in these cases. Uh, always remember that whenever you plant toric lenses uh, in these cases, uh, never promise uh, that full independence from glasses. Otherwise, the patient may uh, tell you that you know uh, that you promised me uh, independence from glasses. So always promise that uh, you know you have pre-existing uh, corneal cylinder of say for example five diopter or six diopter. This lens will be helpful to minimize uh, the residual uh, astigmatism post-op period. Never promise that it will be zero. This is another case uh, where I implanted Symphony uh, toric lens uh, in a case of a cataract with the corneal astigmatism. And uh, this lens is also very good uh, lens design, no financial interest. And this can be uh, helpful in some cases to uh, minimize the dependency on glasses uh, for near and for distance. So uh, in summary, we have tools and technology are available which can help our patient uh, to uh, you know, provide a good uh, visual outcome in difficult situation, in challenging situ situation. And uh, now, nowadays we have very good uh, tools to measure the K-reading, to calculate the lens power and to uh, do the precise surgery and to get the good visual outcome. And in this case, uh, the surgical steps are the more or less same. Uh, you mark the eye uh, and then you just, uh, uh, you know, do the case. This is my, perhaps the, uh, the second last case where I implanted the toric lens in a case of partially absorbed traumatic attack. This was done uh, once again, couple of years ago. And in, this was a young child, uh, I think uh, 16 years old uh, case of long history. Uh, trauma and in such cases uh, it's very important to do precise uh, investigation I did uh, the uh, B scan and the posterior capsule was intact notice that there was a capsule fibrosis of the capsule bag and, and so I used the Vana seizure to cut the uh, the uh, anterior capsule and uh, in such cases since the capsule is fibrous, long standing trauma, so there was less chances of runaway axis. So I just uh, made the opening, I then I implanted the lens, then I dialed the lens in clockwise, anti-clockwise position in order to loosen up the uh, sawmilling ring. You can see uh, this lens was used, uh, just dialed in the uh, clockwise or anti-clockwise, just this will help, this was helpful to loosen the, uh, the sawmilling ring which was present in this case. So once you implant the lens in the bag, and then uh, I just with the visco dissection and uh, technique, I just uh, remove the sombering ring as you can see here. The sombering ring is out, and uh, this can be removed uh, through irrigation expiration or visco expiration. So once you just uh, inject visco elastic and press, put gentle pressure on the 
posterior leap of the incision, the somnium ring is out. And in this way, I was able to to implant the lens in the capsule of Fornicis and uh, the residual cortex and the fibrotic capsule was cut with the vanus seizure. And here you can see uh, the round, nice round people with clear visual axis. And uh, this patient uh, regained good vision. As in my all practice, I use intracambral lignocaine in all uh, intracambral moxifloxacin in uh, all my cases. Sometimes we get, uh, we come across uh, cases like this: hypermature cataract with, uh, you know, uh, hypermature Morgagin cataract. So in such cases, uh, the chances of uh, getting successful rexis is difficult. Uh, so we can use the technique of uh, nanopulse technology uh, to minimize the Argentinian flex sign because once you do the capsular axis in such case the job is 50% done so here we are using the nanopulse technology to achieve the uh, capsular axis so once the capsular axis is done about 5.25 millimeter in size uh, using this uh, device what is known as uh, Zepto nanopulse technology then you can do phaco chop technique under cover of viscoelastic which and then this is implantation of toric multifocal lens uh, in the capsular bag and uh, once again it's very important to remove the viscoelastic behind the capsular bag so in summary uh, we have tools and technology available to provide uh, provide excellent uh, visual outcome in th these difficult situation uh, uh, of course we should uh, ex counsel these cases thoroughly uh, use our uh, precise lens power calculation formally and always under promise and over deliver Thank you once again, Dr. Harsul, for inviting me to this your course. Can I have the mic, please? Thank you very much, Dr. Pandey. Uh,